Last week I was on a supervision course on, on Zoom, online, with a group of people that I've got to know over this last year as we think about how we care for each other and particularly supervise ministers and Christian leaders in the future. And one of the things they do is a check-in where everyone checks in where they are this morning. So you might be full of beans, ready to go, conquer the world, or you may be... And the way they did it this time was to choose an implement from the kitchen. What would you be? I brought a few. You might be really stirred up, so there's a whisk. I'm not quite sure how the ice cream scoop fits in, but you might feel like an ice ice cream scoop. You ready to take in the the riches of God's grace? A can opener? A wooden spoon? I don't know what you feel like. One of the uh, participants said they, they their piece of equipment from the kitchen was a slow cooker. You might feel like a slow cooker that's just gently, gently cooking away. Where are you? I think I went in as a, as a sieve, hoping amid all the stuff that we were learning that I could, and all the things that were going around, around my head, coming back to, uh, to work after a break after Easter, that I could be a sieve and somehow strain out what was crucial or, or what was of the, the heart of, of that day. And I also brought the nutcracker, so maybe um, there you are, ready to crack the nut and come to the heart, the kernel of God's truth for you today. Well, I'm not going to ask you to come public with what piece of equipment you might feel like today, but every one of those pieces of equipment has a purpose, a purpose. And we, as human beings... And we, as followers of Jesus, have a purpose, a unique purpose, each one of us. Each one of us can play our part, not someone else's part, but our particular part in the work of Jesus today. And that part changes over the months and years, what was crucial to you in the past may not be what Jesus is calling you to do today. So think about yourself as an instrument of God's love and truth. How might you play your part today? We play our part in in bringing our worship bringing our praise, bringing our gifts. I brought, um, this isn't my glass of gin and tonic, it's uh, water that I definitely need this morning. And grateful for those bringing in their, their water aid collection. Oh, Alison, you, you've got enough coins in this one to sink a, sink a ship. Two years' worth of coins, and there's not so many coins around nowadays. So thank you for those. And anyone else who's been collecting for water aid, I've forgotten so far to bring in my donations, so I will do that. But that's one way in which we play our part in the different work across the world, bringing help to others. Well, we're going to hear our main reading for today, where Peter and the disciples are challenged, asked by Jesus what they will do. And Peter especially is challenged, do you love me and will you feed my sheep? 
Let's hear this and Tim and Julia and Sarah are to read this to us. And there are uh, a little part for us to play. The words in bold print on your service sheet. I don't know if they're up in the screen as well. They're going up on the screen as well. Um, are for us to, to say so that we can play our part in the story. John, chapter 21, verses 1 to 19. Afterwards, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, also known as Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. Simon Peter told them, I'm going out to fish. The other disciples said, We'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realise that it was Jesus. He called out to them, Friends, haven't you caught any fish? No, we caught nothing. Throw your net on the right side of the boat and you'll find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple, whom Jesus loved, said to Peter, It is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, It is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off, and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from shore, about a hundred metres. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it, and some bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you have just caught. So Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153. But even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, Who are you? You it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread and gave it to them, and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Take care of my sheep. The third time, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, Do you love me? Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Feed my sheep. Very truly I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, Follow me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.